Sudden cardiac arrest occurs when your heart suddenly stops beating. It can happen for a variety of reasons, and if it does, your odds of surviving depend on what happens in the next minutes. We sat down with the local group of survivors to hear their stories and see what can be done to help increase the odds for everyone. They are the 10%, the fortunate few who cheated sudden cardiac arrest, who died and were brought back. I have the records from each hospital that show that I was deceased at their hospital. I was deceased at the other hospital. I was deceased when the EMS came. I was dead, they all thought, and here I sit. They're young and old, men and women. When someone's standing over you was saying, stay with us, stay with us, and they're saying your name, and then you go, oh, this must be serious. <laughs> Their stories are different, but many share a common theme. I had no symptoms, nothing. Each month, survivors and their loved ones gather at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak to share their stories, their struggles, and discuss how to save others. I used to teach CPR, and now someone did CPR on my daughter, and it's, it's crazy. I think of it, and I just, it still doesn't seem real. Dr. Kelly Sawyer leads the group. They feel very isolated, uh, having gone through something so traumatic, um, and not knowing anyone else who'd been through the same thing. They're able to um, share their story with others and help each other uh, about issues that they might be experiencing. When you hear their stories, you begin to understand why each one feels lucky to be alive. On September 20th, 2010, I was teaching at Brownstown Middle School. I collapsed at my desk, you know, fell forward. The kids didn't know what was going on, so luckily they went and got help, so they called 911, and um, I th we think the principal started CPR. I was meeting a friend for dinner in Royal Oak at a restaurant, and um, we were conversing. It all went black, and uh, according to her, I started turning purple, and she just screamed for somebody to dial 911. I was fortunate that two men, both um, came to my rescue and they uh, performed CPR. So I owe those guys absolutely everything. I can't believe how fortunate I was. I'm the parent of a survivor. And my, my daughter was the survivor and she was 17 years old at the time and her heart stopped when she was at high school. And it was the first day of her senior year. It was the first day back after summer break and the bell rang and she got up from her desk and she walked out into the hallway and she just collapsed. And fortunately, it was witnessed, so the vice principal started CPR on her. They didn't just save Chesney that day, they saved a whole family. Um, I was at my three-year-old daughter's dance recital on December 9th, 2007. Apparently, I just flipped right over and quit breathing. Um, fortunately, there were two parents there that were cardiologists and two nurses there. And so the two cardiologists took turns doing CPR on me for 13 minutes until finally um, the first responders got there with an AED and were able to shock me. I understand how fortunate I am to be here every day. So why did this group survive when so many do not? Most collapsed in a public place. Almost all received immediate CPR and many were treated with an AED. They were lucky in the sense that um, someone acted when they needed help, and they also received really good medical care. Because most people who suffer sudden cardiac arrest do not survive, those who do feel a responsibility to speak out, but it's not always easy. And I put something on Facebook today about everyone should learn CPR, and I've gotten like seven likes, whereas anything about the kids or anything else, you get like 800 likes. They are the 10%, but they know there could be so many more. Anyone can have a cardiac arrest at any age, and if someone knows CPR, it increases their chances of survival. If more people would act quickly and perform CPR to the best of their ability, and more places had AEDs, there'd be more survivors like me.